Good morning, Bowtie Nation. Joseph Hogue here. Thank you for joining us for another one of these Monday market updates. Got a great topic for you this week, as well as that market update, which stocks I'm watching this week, the economic news you need to see. And folks, after more than 20 years of investing, uh, more than 10 years of that as a professional analyst, I've learned that the worst stock markets aren't really just when stocks are going now. When stocks are falling continuously, at least you know you can make money buying puts or shorting some of those weaker stocks. No, the worst markets out there are when stocks don't know which direction they want to go, when stocks are up one day and down the next like they have been lately, when stocks just don't know which direction they want to go. It's in that kind of market that there's really no side of the market that is safe or that's going to make you money. But it's in these periods that that best strategy is then finding those bigger trends outside the market, so the trends affecting our lives and then affecting the markets uh, in turn. And one of those trends that I'm watching right now is what's called, being called a triple-demic, okay? The triple-demic of the flu, the, vi the COVID virus, and the RSV virus hitting why everyone feels like that everyone is getting sick right now. And I have found the seven stocks that could bounce on that. So we're going to get right into that. Stick around, though, because then I'm going to have our Monday market update, all the stocks I'm watching, the economic news this week, and how you need to be ready to invest this week. It is not just your imagination yet. Yeah, everyone seems to be getting sick lately, right? More than three quarters of children's hospital beds in the U.S. are full right now. Some hospitals have even started setting up tents for those overflow patients. Uh, more than half the country, 30 states, are reporting higher or very high levels of the flu, and COVID infections have jumped about 15% in the last week alone. And what we're talking about here is what they're calling a triple-demic, okay? There are three viruses hitting the United States right now, struggling under COVID, which of course we are coming out of after a couple of years, but that is still rising 15% in the past week, those infections. The respiratory synictial virus, the RSV, they're hitting children especially hard. And then just the annual flu season, and millions are calling in sick from these. Um, it does seem like everyone is getting sick. I'm just getting myself getting over about two weeks of a, a very bad flu and cold symptoms. Um, in fact, there are two Omicron variants of COVID causing these infections to spike. We can look at this chart to see how bad it really is, but I want to get to those seven stocks that are going to play off of this theme. Uh, we can see here that the flu is spreading earlier and extraordinarily quickly this year. We've had over 13,000 positive test, test cases just by November. And you can see here this chart of the uh, the previous years of flu virus. That, that usually doesn't even get started until about mid-November. So we are starting that flu season as exceptionally early this year. And it is, uh, it is an ex exceptionally hard flu season as well. Now, of course, there's a lot of reasons why this is happening. We don't need to go into them because it really doesn't play into our case for those seven stocks. But, you know, we came off a lot of those precautions, those COVID precautions over the last year, the hand washing, the face masks, the social distancing and politics aside, folks, you know, keeping away from people and washing your hands. It does stop the spread of viruses. So when we stop doing that, obviously you're at more risk of getting any kind of virus, whether it's COVID whether it's flu or this RSV or, or anything like that. So, you know, of course, that just makes it uh, all the more likely that people are going to get sick with some kind of a virus that's going around. Um, we've also had something that uh, most people haven't been talking about, but, you know, over the past couple of years with those extreme precautions for COVID, the, the, the face mask, the social distancing, that meant that those last couple of flu seasons haven't been bad at all. You know, the flu season has been ex exceptionally mild, exceptionally weak over the last couple of years because of that, um, you know, because people were protected more than they normally would be during the winter seasons. Well, that means that meant that people haven't built up an immunity. Okay. Each from one flu season to the next, a big factor is how many people had the flu the year before, and they've built up that immunity to that type of, of the flu virus. There are many different types of flu virus, viruses that go around. And uh, if, you can, if you build up an immunity the year before, or if a large portion of the population builds up an immunity the year before by having that virus, then that makes it less likely they're going to get the virus again in the next flu season. Since we didn't have that over the last couple of years, then it's coming back with a vengeance, right? Uh, we have not built up the immunity in the population to the flu virus for more than two years. And, um, and now everyone is getting sick with it. 
top this all off with, of course, the back to school bug that uh, seems to bite everyone, everyone's kids anyway, uh, when they go back to school every year and then their parents, uh, as well as that push to get people back into the offices, uh, which, of course, just puts people closer into proximity during the winter. And, uh, you know, it's just an environment for any kind of a virus that, that wants to spread. Now, the flu season generally runs from October to May but is, uh, is generally worse between December and March. Okay, so now that is at least six months, or to put it in investor terms, that's two full quarters, and that could mean a surprise boost for some of the stocks I wanna talk about now. First, you're going to have the healthcare and the retailer stocks, of course, and while not falling too badly this year, you could see very strong upside when those fourth quarter earnings are reported in late January and February. Okay, so what I'm talking about here is obviously because everyone is sick, everyone is buying cough syrup, cough medicine, uh, everybody's buying flu medicine, everybody's getting shots and getting tested, then that is going to mean an upside surprise to, er, to sales and to earnings for these specific companies when they report their fourth quarter uh, earnings. Of course, you know, everybody, all the analysts are watching these companies uh, for some kind of a, a profit boost, but I don't think they, they know exactly how bad it has been and, and how big those sales boosts are going to get from this. So it's important to note, though, that the share prices on a lot of these that we're going to talk about may start rising ahead of reported earnings, just in ta anticipation of all this, okay? Everybody knows everyone is sick. Everybody is watching these specific companies and, and those related to uh, to do to, to prove some kind of a, uh, a profit boost and a sales surprise. So all these stocks might get a boost, you know, if uh, ahead of those earnings in that anticipation, or if just one company reports uh, and blows the lid off of this surprise. Okay, so for example, if we have a CVS here, here that uh, reports fairly early, if they come out and report a, a huge surprise to their sales and to their earnings, really talk about this, uh, you know, this last this last couple of months and the fourth quarter as a big uh, a big boost to their to their sales through this, uh, you know, this this triple demic that we're talking about. Then of course people are going to be looking for these other stocks. So. You know, do your research into these other stocks, uh, and if you like any of them, if you want to invest any of them, I suggest uh, getting started early and getting started, getting invested before that big bump. Now for its part, shares of CVS Health, that's ticker CVS, are down just 2% this year, so doing extremely well against that market sell-off of about 15%, so really protecting your money on this one, this safety stock here. Uh, its revenue is expected to grow about 7.5% this year on earnings growth that is 2.6% this year and next. It really seems like it's already an extremely low bar to set. Uh, companies has a strong history of surprising higher, so I don't think expectations are too high for this stock already. I think it can easily beat those earnings and sales figures and uh, maybe even surprise higher, especially in this uh, fourth quarter earnings when it comes out on uh, February 7th. Okay, so, so CVS is re expected to report its fourth quarter or earnings on February 7th there. Of course, CVS collected the contact information for tens of millions of people during that vaccine deployment. That's really why I like CVS. I've been watching CVS is because I think they have all of that data for people, that contact information for people, and they're likely to benefit from it you know, when it comes to trying to get people to come back into the stores. Uh, shares tr do trade for about 0.43 times uh, times on a price to sales basis. That's nearly twice the valuation of its competitor Walgreens, uh, ticker WBA. But, you know, I just, I kind of like the operational performance a little bit better that on CVS. I'm willing to pay a little bit more for it. I think their, their uh, uh, fundamentals are a little bit better. They've handled this all the last couple of years better. And the growth is just better for CVS. We also have Quest Diagnostics, ticker DGX. Uh, it's only down slightly more, about 8% this year. Still beating the market though on that, uh, you know, on that testing. Uh, this is one of the largest testing centers or diagnostic centers in the uh, in the U.S. Uh, sales are expected down about 9% this year, and earnings to crash. 30% as that leader in a clinical testing really sees that drop off in COVID tests. Uh, despite that drop, the company has managed to beat expectations in all four of the prior quarters. So yes, the market is watching uh, earnings and sales fall on this, uh, on this stock, 
but uh, management has been able to beat those expectations. Again, I think this should have a surprisingly good fourth quarter when it comes to report on February 1st. In that same theme here, Laboratory Corporation of America, ticker LH, controls roughly 20% of the independent lab testing in the United States. So, you know, if you don't know, us, hospitals still control the majority of lab testing. So you go in to get, uh, you know, get tested for COVID or for, for, for the flu or for any of these viruses. And uh, most of the time, it's going to be the hospital that, uh, you know, collects the fee and, and makes money off of that. But uh, for the independent lab testing in the United States, Laboratory Corporation is 20% of that market. So a strong controlling share operates in more than 2,000 patient centers and, and offering a range of 5,000 tests. So of course, again, with those increased COVID tests, with the increased flu tests and other tests, uh, you know, you are going to see it in the sales and earnings of Laboratory Corporation. Uh, if there is an increase in demand for these virus testings, you are going to see it here. Shares are down more than uh, more than the others here, about, down about 20% this year. Sales are expected lower by about 7.3%. And again, just like we saw with uh, with Quest Diagnostics, earnings are expected down 30% uh, this year on that COVID testing. Of course, you know that just makes the surprise upside so much more uh, so much more important if it can surprise uh, when it reports on February 8th. You might also watch the shares of the smaller drug makers, those drug makers that were involved in the COVID uh, vaccine, shares like BioNTech, ticker BNTX, and Moderna. Uh, they could get a boost on a jump in that vaccine demand. Like I said, COVID vaccine or COVID infections just over the past couple of weeks were up 15%. Uh, even if COVID infections don't jump again, you know, the especially bad flu season might incentivize people to get the vaccine, the COVID vaccine, just because those symptoms are so similar. Uh, we're also seeing many pharmacies advertising that, that clients or patients, I guess, can get both the COVID and flu vaccines at the same time. So really that that giant uh, flu season that we're experiencing is going to bring people in to get the flu vaccine or the flu vaccine. And then, you know, the pharmacists are saying, hey, while you're here, why don't you get the COVID vaccine as well? So that's why I'm thinking the, uh, you know, the sales, the fourth quarter sales for BioNTech as well as Moderna could be especially high here. Uh, BioNTech is down 28% this uh, so far this year. Moderna is down 25%. So both of these stocks, uh, you know, could get uh, that boost from uh, the COVID vaccine. Of course, in the same theme there, Pfizer, ticker PFE, could also get a boost from the vaccine. Uh, no other company has handled the, the, the COVID vaccine quite as well as Pfizer did, but it's a much smaller part of the company's total sales. So it might not really even make a dent uh, or a difference compared to those smaller drug makers. Okay, shares are down about 12% this year. Uh, so have protected your money. You know, v Pfizer is one of my favorite drug stocks. They have got a great pipeline and always have a great pipeline. So it's a great long-term, uh, you know, long-term stock if you uh, if you want to get in on it at this point anyway shares are trading relatively cheaply at 2.8 times sales versus a five-year average of 3.7 times sales on that price to sales basis um so cheaper than they have been in the uh, in the past five years, uh, not necessarily as cheap as they've been in the past ten years, but but they are uh, they are relatively attractive now. You might also watch some of the pandemic darlings, right? The the stocks, the growth stocks that took off during the pandemic during those lockdowns. Uh, they may get a boost, but it could be more of a push pull fight with the economy. And I'm going to explain here. You've got stocks like Zoom Video Communications, that's ticker ZM. Here you've got Teladoc Health, ticker TDOC, and DocuSign, ticker DOCU. They could all get a boost as people are stuck at home and people are sick. The problem is the recession has forced a lot of companies to kind of reconsider their budget for some of these services like Zoom and DocuSign. And the sick aren't necessarily locked down like they have been over the past couple of years. So they can just go to a doctor instead of seeking that virtual care with TDoc. You know, I do like Teladoc Health. I like DocuSign. I own both of those stocks. Uh, more for a long-term growth perspective, though, I do believe, you know, Teladoc Health is uh, changing the way we, we interact with healthcare. That that trend to virtual healthcare isn't over, even that, even if it has slowed over the past uh, over the past year here. So the upside to these stocks, though, is that right now nobody is expecting anything from them. So any kind of an upsells, upside in sales and earnings for that fourth quarter could be, could be even bigger in the stock prices. 
Now I want to turn it over to our weekly market update, get you ready for the week with the stocks I'm watching as well as the economic news that could highlight the week. I want to focus on a few stocks here. First is Signet Jewelers, that's ticker SIG. It is expected to announce earnings on Tuesday with expectations for earnings to slump 78%. Uh, that's on a drop of just 2.4% drop in sales. You know, for full year earnings are expected down 11% on a 1% drop of sales. Uh, you know, the expectations for earnings just seem like an easy beat for this retail jeweler. Okay, it follows a very strong earnings announcements from luxury names like Capri Holdings and Tapestry. So both stocks jumped on their earnings surprises in mid-November. And that high-end consumer does seem to be stronger than other groups. So I'm thinking Signet Jewelers could do very well when it reports earnings on Tuesday. Again, it uh, it has a very low bar to beat on those earnings, so I, I think it should have no problem beating on the upside to sales and earnings. We've also got Stitch Fix, ticker SFIX. It's going to report its earnings on Tuesday. It actually could be one of the biggest surprises waiting for investors. Maybe not necessarily this Tuesday when it reports, but, but eventually, and I zoomed out to the five-year chart here because I want to show you. I actually uh, recommended this stock back in 2019 at about $20 a share. It boomed all the way up to $95 there in January of 2021. Um, did very well. It was one of our, our biggest winners. Actually sold out a little bit early. I, I couldn't wait and sold out here, you know, late December 2020. So didn't get, didn't get in all of that upside, but uh, but did make a, a very good return on that. And, and of course, it has since just crashed down lower off of that ninety five dollars. Uh, of course, down to you know down to less than four dollars a share. The current quarter is likely to be bad, with analysts expecting a loss of forty seven cents a share. Uh, that's a twenty one percent drop of revenue as well. But the valuation on this stock is just starting to look like something that might actually make for a takeover target eventually. So that's why I'm saying that uh, there could be a big surprise waiting for investors in, tick, uh, in Stitch Fix. Not necessarily this Tuesday when it reports because that earnings that earnings season is expected to be bad. But the market cap was once over $10 billion on this company, right? And is now just $449 million. Okay, so it is less than a 20th of what it once was, trading for $4 a share and 0.2 times on a price-to-sales basis. So Stitch Fix is, a, is an online a retailer, an online, online apparel e-commerce retailer, uh, and 0.2 times on a price-to-sales basis. That's cheap even for a regular traditional apparel retailer, those that bricks-and-mortar retailer like, you know, like The Gap and like, uh, you know, some of those other retailers there. Generally, the e-commerce retailers, the stronger growth retailers, trade for much higher on that price-to-sales basis. Uh, shares sales are expected down 12% this year before rebounding 6% next year. But the company has 42.6 million in net cash, so that is cash over what it owes in debt. Um, you know, it, it it actually holds a little over 100 million in cash, uh, has some debt on the balance sheet, but 42.6 million in net cash. Okay, which gives it plenty of flexibility to survive the economic storm, uh, really pivot into whatever it needs to 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 get that growth back. And what I like about Stitch Fix here, and it's is its strong online business and a focus on data analytics to improve that customer experience every time they visit the site. So it uses an algorithm to really follow the customer experience, follow each specific customer uh, around the site as well as uh, their purchase history to really fine tune that uh, that experience whenever those customers come back to the platform, to the website, and, and make their experience better each and every time. Uh, so what we've what we've seen from that is while active clients are down nine percent over the last year, revenue per client has increased eight percent, really helping to offset that lower base. So what we're seeing is that people are uh, you know less people are coming back to the back to the site, but they're spending more money, and that's because of that customer experience. You know, so when they do come back to the site, they spend more money than they than they previously had. Companies should be able to turn to growth next year, and if not, it just has that strong case to attract a buyer from some of these other retailers desperate for as strong as e-commerce presence that Stitch Fix has. So again, I think any other retailer, any traditional brick and mortar retailer would love to buy this company out, have that uh, have that AI, have that algorithm, and that uh, that e-commerce commerce uh, part to to fold into their own brick and mortar uh, retailer. Of course, I know a lot of people are going to be watching shares of GameStop, ticker GME, when it's expected to report on Wednesday. It's going to expected to report a loss of 28 cents a share on sales of 1.38 billion. Uh, now, Electronic Arts did beat its earnings estimate, and the shares have held held up pretty well with Take Two 
which missed its expectations. So it's really hard to see that the environment for gaming is anything but uh, anything but bad. Okay, so you've got you know two other gaming st gaming related stocks that uh, one beat its earnings expectations, the other one missed expectations. Uh, so you know, of course, with GameStop, it might not be about those fundamentals though. But just any new surprise management can say to to really reveal uh, to to really revive those meme investors and give them one last hope. Broadcom, ticker AVGO, is going to report its earnings on Thursday with investors still watching for that planned acquisition of VMware, which I think is a great deal for both companies, actually. Uh, shareholders of VMware are getting a good price for that. Broadcom, if it is able to, sh to fold in that leader in uh, cloud enterprise services, uh, VMware into its business is going to make it an unstoppable in that enterprise market. So a uh, very strong, very strong uh, vote for uh, Broadcom there. The UK's competition and market authority I did announce that it was re reviewing the plans but no other gov government authority has stepped in in front of this deal yet so there's still a very good chance that that deal goes through uh, the acquisition would be a strong positive again for Broadcom boosting that already strong business uh, the stock isn't cheap though here at, at seven times on that price to sales basis so trading as a growth stock uh, I would like to see it come down a little bit not necessarily uh, sure that this is going to be a, a good quarter for it a lot of those enterprise customers are pulling back on their budget so you know not not saying jump into Broadcom when it before it reports on Thursday could be a bad quarter there could see the stock come down a little bit uh, if it does though I would take advantage of that and, uh, and buy up shares of Broadcom ticker AVGO um, revenue is expected to be up 20 percent this year so that kind of justifies that seven times price to sales basis it is a growth stock uh, and the acquisition of VMware would make it even growthier it is an exceptionally quiet week as far as economic news, not much to uh, to move the markets. Uh, so we do see the ISM Services Index published on Monday. We got the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey on Friday. I don't usually follow the survey very much because I think customers or consumers say one thing and then they go out and do another. But it could be a, a little bit uh, more important this week just because it is one of the only uh, economic reports out there. And I think the consumer right now is extremely important, obviously. Uh, uh, everybody wants to know if they're out there shopping and, and they're they're feeling good about the economy and uh, feeling good about consumer spending. Click on the video to the right for the five dividend stocks better than the QYLD, that NASDAQ covered call ETF. I know a lot of investors love that QYLD ETF, but I found five dividend stocks that will pay you better dividends and more consistently and give you that share price return as well. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.